everybody. Good day. This is Solid Shepherd bringing you a, another video. Um, today I wanted to talk about a game I really want to play, but I can't. And you know why I can't? Because it's an Xbox exclusive. And the real kicker is it's a PlayStation franchise. That's right. I'm talking about Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, it, it, you know, it's had a lot of good reviews, um, and I I really want to play it. It looks good. Uh, I've been on Twitch. I've kind of seen people play it a little bit. I've been looking at YouTube, and it just I started thinking I might just be going crazy. But wasn't Tomb Raider a PlayStation love child? Basically, it was PlayStation's baby, along with Metal Gear Solid, and the start you know it's starting to really make me wonder. How did Microsoft pull off these these coups, you know, of of Sony's franchises? I mean, they got rights to make you know the Metal Gear Solid games. Now they got exclusives on Tomb Raider. I I I, I just find it amazing. I don't understand how this happened. Uh. But that's not really the point I'm trying to get at here. The point I'm trying to get at here is it is indeed, it, it was a PlayStation baby, you know, PlayStation's game. That's where it started. Um, and the amazing thing is, is my, I, I know it's coming. I know it's coming for PlayStation. I know that. Okay, the, the exclusive isn't forever. It's, you know, it has, it has a time limit. It's just that the fact that Microsoft players get to play this great game about a year before the PlayStation gamers get it. I mean, and, and it's a PlayStation game. <laughs> you know, it's... I don't get it. I, 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 you know, and PCs even get it before PlayStation. I mean, I understand it's because it's Microsoft. But the reason I bring this up is because I was reading an article, right? I'm going to look at my tablet real quick. I'm going to pull up the source. And the source is... GameZone.com Okay? And what GameZone.com has to say is... This source suggests that Square Enix had planned on releasing both the PS4 and PSC, PC version of Rise of the Tomb Raider in early 2016. So, like, you know, now time frame. But the lackluster reception that the game had, you know, on Xbox One, made Square Enix renegotiate the release so that the game could build anticipation. Now, you gotta wonder, a game that is a sequel to such a great blockbuster game, you know, just in 2013, and, you know, Tomb Raider, how could it have received such a, such a crappy reception? Well, I will tell you, first of all, it is not a Microsoft title. They might have the exclusive, but it is a PlayStation title. Most of... Now, I'm not a fanboy by any means. You know, I... Yeah, I grew up with PS1 and PS2, but I also had N64, right? I had an Xbox, the first Xbox. And then whenever it came to the next-gen system, I bought an Xbox 360. And I never had a PlayStation 3, because Xbox 360 was night and day. It was the better system. But now, now PlayStation 4, at least hardware-wise, is the better system. It's just fact. You know, you can fanboy it up all you want to, but it's not going to change the facts. The PlayStation 4 is more powerful. Um, and that's why I have one. I'm not a fanboy. Um, but I did grow up on PlayStation, so I do I do get it. I do get the fanboy thing. Um, but anyways, I digress. What I was trying to... point I was trying to make, though, is what Xbox fans like and what PlayStation fans like aren't always the same thing. I mean, you look at the titles that have really sold on, you know, on Xbox. And especially the 360. 
is the Halo franchise. You know, that's, that's it. It's really their exclusive that's just really sold. Uh, I mean, yeah, on the old Xbox, you had uh, Kotar and Jade Empire, which were like RPG games, but that's really it. Uh, but then you had games like Fable. Just they just didn't stack, stack up. They just didn't get it done. Beloved, friend, I love the Fable games, but they just didn't sell as good as they should have. And you go to PlayStation. I mean, PlayStation's like JRPGs, RPGs. Story based, more story based games, whereas Xbox is more like shoot people in the face. That's you know that that's kind of a general saying. I'm not saying all, you know, all Xbox players are like that, but that's where Xbox makes their money. Um, and PlayStation makes it through more of the story games, right? Like Metal Gear, Tomb Raider. You know, they've always made it. So basically, the fans that will appreciate the kind of game that Tomb Raider is, that I'm trying to end platforming. Platforming is another, which is a lot of what the new Tomb Raider series is, is it's next-gen graphics, 3D, third-person platforming. Uh, and, you know, and uh, Nathan Drake, the, uh, the Uncharted, same thing. Same kind of game that Tomb Raider is, really. I mean, if you really look at it. Pretty much the same freaking thing, only if a dude, you're playing as a dude instead of a chick. Um, so yeah, that's where the audience is, is on, and you know, most of the audience is on PlayStation. But you're selling an exclusive to Xbox, the people who don't really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, there's going to be lackluster sales. Of course there is. Okay. Now, if you would have sold it on PlayStation first, and then PC, and then Xbox, we might be having a completely different discussion right now. It might have been one of the highest selling games of 2015. But you decided to give Microsoft the exclusive. Good job. Good marketing there. And speaking of marketing, let's look at business. Uh, because it's a business. You know, it's a multi-million dollar industry, right? Video games are. So let's talk business. What sense does it make to do exclusives on a system? What kind of business sense does that make? I mean, I might just be crazy here. But I'm thinking if I am a video game company publishing a video game, I want that game to be in as many living rooms as possible because that's more money for me. That's more. That's more units. That's more you know discs, hard copies sold, and that is also that's also more DLC that people can buy because more people have the game. Right? So that's just smart business. You know? I mean, but the, the only time I can see exclusives really working is if it's like a launch title or something like that and you need it to move systems because people are trying, you know, it's like, well, I have a PlayStation, so why should I, why should I buy an Xbox? Well, it's because if you love Halo and the new Halo game's coming out, you're not going to be able to play that on PlayStation. So I understand it to a point, you know, for a year or two, keep it exclusive, those exclusive, you know, to sell units. I get it. Uh, but eventually, that time period is going to wear off, and the exclusive is just going to start hurting you. And at that point, you need to, you need to put it to other systems. Okay, I'm looking at you until dawn. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm looking at you, Halo. You could be making so much more money, but you're only catering, you're only selling to a third of your audience. A third. What sense does that make? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. So, 
why not sell to everybody? Like I said, I understand if you're trying to move systems, okay, for a limited amount of time, like Tomb Raider is right now, I just don't understand why Tomb Raider went to the Xbox for an exclusive, because it's, it's always been a PlayStation game. You know, Microsoft, I'll, I'll give them this, they're, they're some shady people, they got, they got some moves to pull that one. But I guess, you know, PlayStation also kind of got the duel with Mass Effect. So they're both doing it, which makes sense, you know. There shouldn't... Why? 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 Don't you want everybody to be able to purchase your game? As a developer, why would you agree on an exclusive? You're limiting the amount of money you can make. You're limiting the amount of sales you can get, which means you're limiting the amount of people who can play it. You're limiting your chances of winning Game of the Year and getting all these awards. You're limiting your income from the game. It's just limiting. It's, you're limiting yourself by doing that. It just makes no sense. You know, for either system, either system, either game, either system's games that are exclusives, it makes no freaking sense. You know, Nintendo really makes no sense. They're like, they're like freaking feudal Japan and closed off from the rest of the world, refusing to join the trade, you know, join the party, the international trade. Like, come on, Nintendo. I understand you love your Mario and you love your Zelda and you don't want to let them loose on the world, but you're just not going to cut it. You're going to go the way of Sega if you continue down this road. You're going to go the way of Sega. you got to step up to the plate. If the NX doesn't work, you're going away. You need to start getting in on, these se on the second party games action. You're just not going to... I know you got a lot of money, but that can only go so far. How do you stay a millionaire? You keep on making millions. If you don't keep on making millions, that money's going to go away. You're going to lose it. It's just it's just facts. Uh, but yeah. It's just basically my little tidbit. is I just don't understand why... Why exclusives? Like I said, there's probably a couple games I could see systems doing. Like uh, Sony, you know, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Microsoft... Halo, at least for a limited amount of time. But it only makes sense once those games get older to go ahead and allow people from the other systems. Because everyone can't afford both systems. Or all three, heaven forbid, all three. And then Nintendo has another one coming out. But then they say Nintendo Wii U will not be coming in cat. You know what I'm saying. Nintendo won't, uh, the Wii U will not become incompatible. There we go, incompatible. Uh, it'll still be able to be used. So then they're expecting you to have a NX and a Wii U, and then the other consoles are expecting you to have for their exclusives an Xbox and a PlayStation 4. It's just that business. So people won't be able to buy all that. So then you have a whole part of the market that's just we can't afford all the systems, so we're just not going to play those games. And you're never getting any money from those games from those people. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. From just a purely business standpoint, it makes no freaking sense. From a gamer standpoint, it's annoying because you see these great games you want to play, but you, just, you can't. You just can't. You're pretty much forced to watch other people do Let's Plays on YouTube. And you don't get to enjoy it for yourself. So that's just my little rant. Uh, not being a fanboy at all in this. You know, if you're a fanboy of any console and I brought up a game I feel like should go to other systems, please don't get butt hurt. I'm not saying it shouldn't be exclusive to your system first. I'm saying it just makes sense after a while to let others enjoy this great game that your console put out also. That's it. And it also allows these companies to make more money. Anyways. That's all for today. Well, I don't know. I might make something else later. Who knows? Uh, but that's all for right now. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, this has been Solid Shepherd, signing out.